Senator Portman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, to Chairman Bernanke, thanks for your insights today. As usual, I want to join my colleagues in commending you on the increasing uh, openness and transparency at the Fed. And in that spirit, I'm going to ask for your uh, openness <laughs> and transparency on some questions on the economy. Um, you talked a little about um, the fact that you see some signs of improvement, especially in manufacturing. Uh, those are certainly welcome. Uh, but you also cited a number of troubling aspects. You talked about the long-term unemployed and said that over 40 percent of people have now been unemployed for more than six months, which is twice what it was in the last recovery. Uh, I would add to that that this recovery is not like any previous recoveries. It's certainly going back to the Depression, which you're a student of, in the sense that the jobs aren't, aren't coming back the way they have. We're over 5 million jobs down still, 48 months after the recession. At this time, after the 81 recession, which was the most deep, deepest recession in recent times, we had 6 million jobs that had been created as compared to over 5 million down. And even in the so-called jobless recovery of 2001, as you know, at this point, 48 months out, we were up at least 350,000 jobs. Something's going on that's, that's very different. Um, I also think that the labor participation rate uh, issue is a, is a key issue, and it is part of your mandate. Um, you didn't talk about that in depth, but my understanding is um, you said earlier the 8.3 percent is understating unemployment, but if the participation rate were simply where it was prior to the recession, which I think is about 66 percent participation versus 64 percent, our unemployment number would be over 10 percent. And so I, I think we've got a more serious structural problem than uh, perhaps just another business cycle. And if you agree with me on that, um, then I'd, I'd love to hear what you think about what we should do in terms of structural changes. Um, I would add to that, by the way, what you cited on the fiscal side. Um, you, in essence, said that we are an increased probability of a fiscal crisis, as I read your testimony, because of crowding out higher debt payments, but also the possibility of, mm -hmm. as what's happened in, in Southern Europe, a uh, sudden spike in interest rates. So my question to you is, on the tax side, on the regulatory side, on the health care side, on the energy side, as you talked about briefly on, um, you know, in, in, in the area of health care costs, worker retraining, uh, don't we need a sort of a reset of the economy and a more aggressive structural change to our economy? And if so, uh, if you agree with that, um, you know, along what lines would, would you suggest? Well, first of all, I, th I think that there is a still a substantial cyclical component in what's happening. Um, you know, our estimate of long-run unemployment of 5.2 to 6 percent is still quite far below 8.3, of course. Um, uh, so it remains important to try to continue to support the recovery. Um, there are uh, a number of, of forces that are slowing the recovery, and I talked about housing and financial markets and credit markets in my, in my testimony. Um, all that being said, good policy is good policy any time. Uh, there's lots of things where the U.S. Uh, would benefit from structural reforms. I've talked frequently about uh, the tax code. I know you're very interested in, in budgeting and tax code issues. That, that would be very uh, constructive. Um, we have very important needs on education and workforce skills. Um, uh, R&D uh, continues to need support. Uh, healthcare is a major, major issue, both because of uh, the, f the federal fiscal situation, this is the major force driving the long-run deficits, or a major force, uh, but also because uh, these high costs uh, are bad for the uh, efficiency and the living standards of the economy in general. So um, those are all areas that, you know, when you and I were colleagues in the, in the previous administration, we talked about some of those issues. You've worked on trade, um, which is also an area where I think the progress can still be made. So all of these structural uh, reforms, I shouldn't be put on the shelf just because we're still recovering from a, a deep recession. I, I would just suggest that, you know, back in those days you talked about, I was uh, OMB director in 07, as you know, we had 4.5% unemployment. Uh, we had a, a debt that was 1.2% uh, of GDP, things seemed like they were going pretty well. Uh, obviously, they weren't. There were some underlying problems in the economy. Uh, but the fact is, I think we need more of a sense of urgency. And I think from your um, position um, and one of credibility and, and respect on, on the monetary side, but also on the fiscal side, I think, I think that sense of, uh, of urgency is needed. I, I really believe that we are looking at something different this time. And I think if we don't 
begin to make these serious changes, we're going to be in trouble. You mentioned tax reform as an example. In the last two decades, every one of our OECD partners, meaning the developed countries in the world, mm -hmm. have reformed their tax code to attract investment and capital. You talked about the need for us to change our tax code to encourage working, to encourage savings and investment, mm -hmm. capital formation. Everyone has done it, except us. And we continue to fall behind as a result, in my view. So, and this, I think, can be played out in these other areas we talked about, certainly including on the regulatory side and health care, as you said. And as you say, health care will bankrupt the country unless we do something about it. So I thank you for your testimony today and uh, look forward to your continued advice on the structural changes we need in our economy to truly uh, deal with your second part of your mandate and uh, to get this economy and jobs back on track. Thanks, Senator.